Hello and welcome to our senior design presentation. We are the South Dakota State University Wellness Center Climbing Wall Team. We are sponsored by the Miller Wellness Center with an advisor of Mr. Jason Worthy. Our team members are Patrika Nam, Brody Mao, Benjamin Ada Abbott, and me, Anthony Gerton. So in this presentation, we'll be going through our project objectives, the specifications and constraints of our project, as well as the block diagram of our project. And then we will go into a demonstration showing off our design solution results and conclusions for the project. So to start, we're going to be going into the project objectives. The objectives of this project are to create a system for the South Dakota State University Wellness Center's climbing wall that will replace the current sign-in system for the climbing wall patrons and make it easier to track the patrons' details, such as their uh, specifications and for what they can and cannot climb, as well as being able to manage climbing wall routes the current system at the Wellness Center uses pen, and pen paper and manually adjusted spreadsheets to manage sign-ins and the climbing wall routes, which is inefficient. This new system is being created to increase the efficiency and accessibility of the sign-in system. It should be able to replace all the old functionalities from the system that they have right now while being easier to use and to update. Now we're gonna pass it over to specifications and constraints with Ben. In specifications and constraints, there are quite a few items. Uh, the software must track patron visits to the climbing wall. The software must be able to generate reports on patron activity. The software must be able to keep track of climbing wall routes as they need to be changed. It must keep track of the patron check-ins and the information must connect to the SDSU wireless network, the check-in system must be usable with a scanner, and the software must run on the Windows Surface Pro. Next, there's the block diagram. The system will be used via web page using an IIS proxy. The server is a large block in the upper right where all the logic views and models are. There's the database which uses SQL to save the patron uh, route and login information. The scanner, highlighted in red there, uh, will be used to help patrons sign in. And finally, there's the green block, which are the reports that the system can generate and export to the Windows surface. I'm Brody Mao, and in the next part of our presentation, I'll be taking over the first part of our demo and going into some authentication and authorization. So let's get right into it. All right, so here we have our web application, and we're just at the um, home page right now. Nothing's on it, uh, just where you load in. Um, I'm going to first demonstrate here, if I go to any of these tabs here, um, it's not going to let us see any information. It's just going to request a login. That's because nobody logged into the system is going to have access. Um, so go ahead and log in here with these Google Remembered uh, credentials. This is just our preceded administrator information. Uh, you can change whatever um, as you please. Okay. And here we are, we have loaded in. And the first thing I want to show off is our administrator portal. We have two sides to this, user management and role management. I'm going to go ahead and go into our user management first. Um, and then we just have, first thing we'll notice here is we just have our first uh, user, which just is the administrator we're logged into right now. I'm going to go ahead and edit this. Um, let's just say our email is Tony. Tony's our administrator, Tony at admin.com. Sure. Um, so if you need to uh, edit or change your email for any reason, you can just go in and head, hit the edit button. Um, and then one thing I want to do here quick too is add a new user. Let's call him Jack. Jack.jacks at jack.sdstate.edu. And then just to keep this demo simple, I'll keep the same password that I have for our administrator. And I will create this new user and I'll save our password. So now we have a new user into the system. And one thing that you may notice, or you will notice, is that um, 
we don't have this user added into any of our roles yet, so they're not actually authorized. And I'll demonstrate that here. I'll log in. There we go. Jack now has access to all of these other tabs, and he has more ability to maneuver within the system. So now taking a look at the reports section of our software, you can see it brings you to a page where you can generate your report. You press, you can either type it in manually or you press this to drop down a calendar and a clock. So you can set, say, Saturday at, you know, 1 p.m. to today at 7.56 p.m. And when you click the submit button, currently it doesn't do anything because the functionality is not entirely completed yet. But when it is fully completed, there will be a pop-up on the bottom of the screen with a reports Excel file that will download itself to your computer and you can click on it and it will open itself up after it is finished downloading. And it will have all of the patrons from the, that visited the climbing wall from the two given dates and times. Hello. I'm Pat and I'll be demoing some more functionality of the climbing wall software. So first we're gonna go over patrons. So as you can see, we have two separate uh, buttons, check-in and register patron, and there's a table below, below them. So first let's go over register patron and it will po pop up a modal asking about either the badge number and the name. So let's say that the badge number is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the name is John Smith. So press save. It's going to be added to the database. And the check-in is going to feed in from the database. And you can see that John Smith is present right here with certifications of none. Also, another thing with the check-in system, say, say that you have a lot of patrons to, to filter through, I can just go into the search bar, type in say John Smith and the name will pop up due to the filter. Let's check them in. And also another th thing about the check-in is that if a patron is checked in, then they will not be able to be selected again to avoid duplication in the check-in table. Let's close. So right now you can see that their badge number, name, the time that they came in, which is 334 at the current moment, and th their certifications. And to the right of that is an edit and checkout. Currently at this time of the recording, the edit functionality is not implemented, but the checkout is, so we can check them out. And when we go back into the table, you can see that the name pops up once again. So next, let's go over routes. And you can see that we is we are given a table of the listed routes that are currently at the climbing wall. Say that uh, a route just got added up. So you press add route. And let's say that the route difficulty is a 5.11a. That's just for difficulty. And color that correspond to the color of holds, it's called say green. And since it's a roped climb, we have to determine what rope number it is on for location. Um, we're gonna see, currently at the climbing wall, there are 12 roped routes. So let's just say 12. The date and time, it defaults to the current date and time. So it is April 27 at 3.36 PM. Just Let's just select that. Location is optional. Uh, location can uh, is easier to determine, well, mainly for boulders. And let's say that the setter is also John Smith. So press create. And all the way at the bottom, you see that the fields that we input is now showing up on the table. Um, say that the route isn't as difficult as it is listed. So let's bump that down to a 5.10D. Press save. And once again, that the grid just shows up 
right here. And you can, as you guys can see, it says click on any header to sort routes by the category. So I press gray, color, rope, date, put up, location, or setter. I press that and it determines its listing order, whether it be ascending or descending. And that applies to every single header. And say that a route comes down from the wall, let's just go over the 510D that John Smith has created. That route has been uh, taken down. So just press delete. It's gonna say, are you sure you wanna delete this? You press delete and it is removed from the list.